time and season. Let someone say time and season. When you look around, you will agree with me that the plan of God for us is beautiful. The plan of God for us is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. In its time, yet that time is limited. Life is too short to waste time on things that have no lasting value. Life is too short to waste time on things that has no significance. I want to tell you that you, you have beginning and end. Tell your neighbor, you have beginning. Everyone has beginning and end. I have beginning and end. I want to take my reading from the book of Luke 5. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. In verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out time and season there is time to be born time to grow time to face persecution and time to reap the product of victory it was not by mere chance that Jesus chose Peter's boat at the seaside. It was by providential arrangement that is by divine arrangement as it should be by divine way. That is Presidenting. When God is executing His plan in our life, He also designs and arranges events which continue to unfold until His purpose is revealed. He also designs and arranges events which continue to unfold until his will is done. Because Peter was to be a source of blessing to his people, he had to taste disappointment he had to taste setback. He had to taste poverty and want. When you read down there, you will see that we are free moral agents. You can choose to listen, you can choose not. Peter was capable of saying no because he was a free moral agent. 
He can choose to say, no, don't talk to me. I'm, I'm not happy. I've been here since morning. I mean, nothing. Please go. Had Peter been overwhelmed by the situation around him, he would have said no. Or walked out of Jesus in anger and frustration. Whatever situation you are in, if you are able to see beyond that situation, you will know what God says about that situation. The purpose of God is lying behind. Have you received a sack letter you are about to receive? Think well as a Christian. Behind your situation lies God's purpose. Whatever situation you are in, your situation may be part of the events that will reveal God's purpose in your life. Remember, there is something far more important than whatever situation you are passing through. Your dream, your goal. Men of purpose do not concentrate on where they are. Their focus, their aim and desire is on their destination. Where are you now? Are you suffering? Are you in abject poverty? Remember, the man that is poor is not the man that has no money, but one without a dream. Tell your neighbor, the man that is poor is not the man that has no money in the pocket, but one without a dream. So when you say, hey, what is wrong? You see a man by outward appearance, you say he's suffering. No. They are suffering that have no dream. They are poor that have no dream. The man that is poor had no dream. When Joseph was in the dry pit, he was aware of this, that they are suffering, that have no dream. He was aware that they are poor, that have no dream. He was aware of this. This awareness comforted him while in the dry pit. This awareness comforted him Why in Potiphar house? This awareness comforted him Why in the prison? He asked himself when he was in the dry pit, where is my dream? I know this is not where I belong. When you do not know where you are going, anything can influence you. 
When you do not know where you are going, anything can irritate you. When you do not know where you are going, anything can overwhelm you. If Joseph did not know where he was going, the situation in the dry pit will have irritated him. Will have overwhelmed him. If Joseph did not know where he was going, the situation in Potiphar's house would have influenced him. You know, a lot of things was happening there. He was being taken care of. If Joseph did not know where he was going, the situation in the prison condition would have irritated him. He was in the prison because he knew where he was going. What can separate us from our dream as a Christian? Can affliction? Can poverty? Can setback? Can sickness? In all this, man without purpose can be separated. However, In all this, there is something far more important than all this. Let me take you to the book of Luke 22. It's a word of encouragement to every one of us here. Luke 22, verse 32. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. All men make mistakes, but the people of God get back up. Certainly, we will fall, but with Jesus supporting our position, we will soon get back up. You will not have been here today if you had not been made sensible by the necessity of life. I say you will not have been here today if you had not been made sensible by the ups and downs of life. You are so tired and sick of the world and now you are ready to embrace the superior order of Jesus. Amen. Many of us will not have been here today if you had not been made sensible by the ups and downs of life. Open your Bible with me to the book of John 14. Verse 27, I read, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Christ's new order, there is peace, not as the world gives. There is healing, not as the world gives. There is deliverance, not as the world gives. There is freedom, not as the world gives. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, 
Christ knew others. There is peace, not as the world gives. There is healing, not as the world gives. There is deliverance, not as the world gives. There is freedom, not as the world gives. Open your Bible with me. Look 5. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his knees. Hmm. He fell down at his word. Can you see? He dishonored himself so that Jesus might be honored. He fell down at his knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. <laughs> what do you understand about this? Today, we are no longer conscious of our sin again. That is why we can come to Jesus with our petition, and complaints without any regard for his purity. Today, we are no longer conscious of our iniquities again. That is why we can come to him with our petition and complaint without any regard for his Purity. That is for his holiness. Listen to Peter once again, verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his knees, saying, Depart from me, I'm a sinful man. He dishonored himself. So that Jesus might be honored. Today, we are no longer conscious of our sin. That is why we can come to Him with our petition and complaints. Believe that Jesus will fall into sentimental. Simon Peter was conscious of his sin. That was why he asked Jesus to depart from him. Knowing that Jesus' purity might not tolerate his sinful action. Jesus' purity might not tolerate his war. His action, his way of life. Listen, we fail to know that Jesus knows who we were, who we are, and who we shall be. In other words, Jesus knows your past, your present, and your future. We are Simon, Peter of our day, fisherman. We are no longer conscious of our sin. That is why we can come to him with our petition and complaints. Without any regard for his purity. Jesus knows 
who we were, who we are, and who we shall be. In other words, he knows your past, your present, and your future. Simon Peter knew this. He was conscious of his sin. That was why he asked Jesus, depart from me. Knowing that Jesus' purity might not tolerate his sinful nature, Jesus' holiness might not tolerate his sinful nature, Peter was conscious of his sin. He knew he was a sinner. He was conscious of his sin. That was why he asked Jesus to depart from him. Knowing that Jesus' holiness might not tolerate his sinful nature. Not like that. But today, we are no longer conscious of our sin. That is why we come to Jesus with our petition and complaints. Without any regard for his purity. Jesus knows who we are who we are and who we shall be. In other words, he knows our past, our present, and our future. Where can you go from his present? We that are born of Jesus, we are forward lookers. Forward lookers believe that the death is yet to come. We always believe that the death is yet to come. We must keep the profession of our faith. When the goings are good, Jesus is the law. When the goings are tough, Jesus is the law. We know true believers during hard times. In our spiritual work with the Lord, we have good and hard times. So how do you handle your hard times? In our spiritual work with the Lord, there are good and hard times. True believers can easily be recognized during hard time. As Christians, when the goings are tough, when our expectation seems to go opposite. When things go contrary, we Christians will remember our dream. At that time, our dream is our director. Our dream is our direction. Our dream is our guide. Our dream is our role map. So now we open our lips with faith in our hearts. Let the resurrection power fall upon me. In the place of pain, Receive the joy of resurrection. Yeah. In the place of poverty, receive the blessing of resurrection. Yeah. 
in the place of setback and disappointment, receive the breakthrough of resurrection. Yeah. Right now, those who are under the influence of this telecast, open your lips with faith in your heart. Ask for the resurrection power of Jesus to fall upon you. Say, fall upon me. Fall upon me. Fall upon me. In the place of pain, receive, receive, receive the joy of resurrection. In the place of poverty, receive the blessing of resurrection. In the place of setback disappointment, receive the breakthrough of resurrection. Prayer. Demande au Seigneur Jésus de déverser sur toi la puissance de la résurrection. Face à la maladie, reçois la guérison de la résurrection. Face à la pauvreté, reçois la bénédiction de la résurrection. Face au déboire, reçois la percée de la résurrection. Élève ta voix et prie. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated.